Wow! Makes me want to eat pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, hello, hello! Welcome back to Exotic Wine Travel. I am your host, Matthew Lorkey. Hello, I'm Shireen Tan. Welcome back to the show. We are going to do a tasting video. It's been a while since we did a tasting video together. We are excited. Sorry about my hair. Still crazy. We're still in lockdown, but salon's open in, in a week, so I'm excited. Congratulations. <laughs> We're tasting through a, a wine club that we actually love, an Italian wine club called Rascioli. Uh, sm it's a wine club that deals with only small Italian producers, mom and pop type shops, or the and they work with vineyards that are only farming organically, biodynamically. We really love the club, right? Exactly, because it comes with an educative aspect as well. Because once in a while, they introduce grapes and producers that we never heard of, never even read about. So that's very exciting. At the same time, they also have some classic producers that we are more or less familiar with and it's nice to revisit some of their portfolio. I, I really love them because these are small producers. Uh, I, I love Italian wines. Italian wines can be intimidating if you want to try new things because of all the producers, all the different grape varieties, but they hand select some good stuff and they give a lot of education on it, right? That's mm -hmm. what you like about them. They also have like a lot of videos on their website as well where they show the farming process or they show the people behind the wine so there's a very intimate aspect to it as well we have videos too where the sommelier is tasting the wines like we're doing uh just so you guys know we are affiliates the, of this wine club mm -hmm. but we get approached all the time by wine clubs i have to turn almost all of them down last year though they sent me a box of six wines and i was just completely shocked by the quantity and uh, the the diversity and the quality they sent me six wines last time I like five a lot. One I thought was interesting, I didn't enjoy as much. So we're gonna taste through some today. This is the only wine club that we work with right now. Yeah, this is the only yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, this is the wine club we wish we would have started. I love Italian wines. This box was so exciting when it got sent to me because there's some producers that I know and then there's some producers I don't know, some grapes I know, some just real interesting stuff. You ready to get started? Let's go for it. What do you want to taste? <laughs> Which one? There's two sparklings. Dun, 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 dun. This. this one. Okay. <laughs> so we have the French. This is actually very cool. This is the Solo Uva French Corta Dosaggio Zero, which is a Brut Natur. Brut Natur. This is a Blanc de Blancs Chardonnay. This is very cool. I'm glad that you chose this because you love champagne. You're hard on Blanc de Blancs and you're hard on Brut Nature. You don't think that people do it very well, right? Uh, why, why do you think that people do, don't do Brut Nature very well? Lack of balance. Uh, generally, it's just lack of balance. The idea of having a Brut Nature is very charming, right? You don't add anything else to it. Uh, whatever RS that's left from fermentation, you use it to balance the wine. But it's not always the case, darling. A lot of time, the acidity is too striking. It's just... It's just not a good idea. <laughs> uh, the cool thing, for those of you that don't know how classical method sparkling is made, what they do is they make a still wine, just like you would have a normal dry wine. Then what they have to do is add some sugar and yeast to start a second fermentation in the bottle. And then once the fermentation is done, they pop off the top, they sometimes put a little bit of sugar back in and then cork it and then it's ready to go to the market. Uh, the cool thing is Brut Nature means the second time they don't add any sugar. And what's cool is in Champagne Method wines, they usually add cane sugar. This producer only adds his own grape and must only grape sugar from the grapes that he grows. So I'm ready to get started on this. <laughs> there we go. Okay, let's get into this, shall we? 100% Chardonnay. I did a little research on all these bottles before I opened them. This spent a whopping 36 months on nice. the leaves. So let's uh, get into, well, after the bubbles die. <laughs> so you can see the pressure is quite... Shireen is hard. Shireen loves champagne. So I'm excited. To, she's going to be very critical about this. We're going to be very honest about these type, these wines. What's cool is in Rosholi, there's three tiers. There's a, kind of a basic tier, which is you're going to see right here. These are lower priced wines, even though they're still great. The second tier, and then they have a, an expensive collector tier. But all the wines are good. So this is from, this is from the... The mid-range tier, basically. What, what do we got here? Hmm. Lemony, parry, nice on the nose, very nice on the nose. Still, you know, 
Italy's the number one market for sparkling wine in the world, actually, mm -hmm. uh, by volume. This doesn't have a, a bunch of yeasty champagne notes. It's quite autolytic, but it's not too much. Yeah, but it's got but it's got like this nice. Cl I guess it, the age notes. When you have in champagne, they have all the cuvées from different vintages that can blend, get the age notes. Mm -hmm. Really clear, precise fruit. Pear, lemon, white peach. Let's give this a go. It's slightly floral as well, very slightly. Nice small bead of bubbles. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have the richness and the complexity of like a champagne, a Blanc de Blancs, but very enjoyable. What do you think? I like the balance here. It's really, really refreshing. Very good level of acidity. Um, it's got sweetness mm. from the fruit as well. Uh, the texture is not as soft as I would like, but in terms of the taste, I really like it. Sharp. What you're going to get from Blanc de Blancs, which means basically a white wine from white grapes. This is from Chardonnay. Lots of acidity, sharpness. Uh, this is, a, this is an, a delicious bottle of bubbles. Really delicious. Mm -hmm. It's not a co super complex, profound bottle of champagne. But in the French Accorta style, in this kind of method, method classical, I think it's pretty well done. Anything else that you want to add on this? No, I agree 100%. I mean, I'm, I'm, gonna taste a lot. I mean, I'm a pretty much, uh, I'm saying this is not champagne, so don't expect champagne, but a good, very good sparkler. I'm in the 90 point range okay. out of this. Do you think it's the quality is that good? I'm with you. Oh, and you're tough too. It's linear. So. It's very linear, but at the same time, again, for Brut Natural, it's very balanced. Mm, nice. Let's move on, shall we? Good job. Good job on the first uh, selection of bubbles. Well, they also sent us a Riesling Method Ancestral sparkler, so I'm excited to try that. Let's try a red. What do you want, what do you want to try for red? Oh. Let's do this. Oh, okay. Wow. This is a very, very well-known producer, uh, the, the, the Le Ranier. This is the Troncone. Toscana Rosso 2016. Mm -hmm. This is 100% Sangiovese. This producer knows Brunello, does Brunello very well. This is a great example. I think what you need to do is you pick wines from great producers. You pick great producers and you kind of buy their base level wines, right? Uh, while I open this, you want to talk about a wine that we opened last night? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I've never heard of this producer, have you? No. Yeah, so we tasted this last night and we thought, oh, it's just going to be a nice, simple Barbera di Elba to go with like our fried chicken dinner and stuff. But whew, that was, this was stunning. This bottle uh, exemplified what Barbera can be. It's very fruity. It's very generous on the palate. Very good texture. But yet at the same time, Barbera, what do you expect? Just amazing, crispy, really fresh acidity. Let's let's retaste this again because we I tasted it last to. night. I picked it last night because I thought it was gonna be kind of it was in there basic. I thought it was gonna be simple, just a, just a touch, just a touch. Uh, base, uh, kind of basic entry level wine, and it turned out to be really good. Mm -hmm. Rizzi is the producer, Barbera de Alba 2017. The producer is actually in the, I think, Treso, which is actually one of the towns allowed in Barbaresco. Oh, Treso. Yeah, you're right. Treso. Treso. Okay, yeah. so uh, let's give this let's give this a go again. We already tasted this, but I loved it. For... And another thing I like about Barbera, it takes a little bit of shriveled grapes really well, and it also takes on oak really well. So over here, you smell this. Really nice toastiness from the oak, uh, a little bit more like hazelnut, um, chestnut sort of nose. Do you get that? For me, it's got all the Piemontese flair, like uh, it's you got blackberries, dried cranberries, hazelnuts, a little bit of earthiness. I think you love Barbera, right? I love it. I, the way I would summarize Barbera is, is generous without excess weight and very bright acidity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Barbera, Barbera, right? Go on, I'm just going to drink this. <laughs> so anyways, uh, I, I thought this was excellent. I have this written down my notes as 90 plus. Uh, I think Barbera is just a fantastic, food-friendly grape. It's like the Sangiovese of Piemonte, basically. Mm -hmm. This is the type of wines that most of the locals are drinking, not the Barolos, not the Barbarescos. This is... Was... <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> You like it that much, don't huh? I love it. I love it. Um, really soft, nice tannins. I know I'm the scorer, but what, what, can, what kind of... 
For me, yes. definitely more than 90. I would say 91, 91 plus even. Oh, you're higher than I think than there, there is aging potential in this wine. I mean, you're not expecting a lot more from Barbera. I like it fresh. I like the fruitiness. But okay, and I better stop talking. <laughs> anyway, so here we go. We have the, the Le Ranier, the Tronconi, Toscana Rosso 2016. 2016 was an extraordinary vintage mm. in Tuscany. I am, you know, wow. from past episodes, I love Sangiovese. Wow, so I'm, oh, sorry about Don't that. Worry about so it. I am really looking forward to tasting this. Uh, anything, anything else that you want to add on this? I do. I find the label interesting. And even for me as well, knowing wine, right? As a typical consumer, if I go into a shop and I don't know anything about this wine, it's quite difficult for me to pick up a wine that looks like this because of the label. It tells me that it's probably a small producer, could be a little bit rustic, yada yada. So I think that's the virtue of, of Wine Club as well. It gives you the opportunity to get out of your comfort zone and show you wines uh, with a certain level of, of trust because you already trust the Wine Club, so you will taste the wine. This is true Sangiovese color. Some of the uh, wines in the south of Tuscany, Chianti Classico, have Merlot Cabernet blended into light color. You've got already kind of a brownish rim. You can see through it, almost Pinot Noir like in color, right? Mm -hmm. Like an old world. What do you think on the nose? <laughs> you like you like it, right? No, I'm sorry. Oh, you don't like it. I don't. <laughs> you like you like it, right? No, I'm sorry. Oh, you don't like it. I don't. You know, I actually like it a lot more right now. Really? Why? What was the, you didn't like it at first. Well, that's the thing, right? It's always difficult when mm. you just open a pop open a bottle and then just taste it and smell it immediately. And I appreciate and this oxidative style during fermentation. It's giving a lot more complexity. So what's with these wines that happened last time in the wine club? I didn't like some of the two at first, but then after time I liked them a lot. That, that's why every time you have the opportunity, it's always nice to really enjoy and discuss and drink through the bottle of wine. For me, although I have to say, <clears throat> I'm about 89 out of 100 on this point. I think it's really good. It's the type of wine I want with food. doesn't have the oomph to, to you know, kind of push past 90, but I still think it's very good. So... I think a nice, interesting little selection, right? Yes, and I think this is what's interesting as well. It creates dialogue between the both of us. I'm looking forward to This is cool. We're not going to taste these now. We're going to have to look for an article. Mm -hmm. They said, I don't. I didn't want to pick wines. I knew that I was glad that this we were disagreed on this because there's a couple wines here I know I'm going to like, like the Damian yeah. Nekai. This is 100% Friulano. This is uh, macerated for 60 to 90 days. Mm -hmm. I love this wine. I know this producer, Friuli Venezia Giulia. I'm super excited to taste it. They also said as a Piero Busso Barber, Mondino Barbaresco from 2016. Oh, wow. 16 is also an extraordinary vintage in Piemonte. I know I'd love this, but this kind of wine needs a lot lot of time to sit there and evolve. Do you know this producer? No, but it's supposed, to be, well. it's supposed to be very good. So if you know them, okay. put the put the link in the description box. Yeah. Plus this Riesling from Umbria. I'm so Method excited Method Ancestral. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, guys, if you want, you can check out our link. You can get to... I, one one cool thing too, by the way, these are not inexpensive wines. I was so shocked when I saw French Accortas usually roll in. I don't know what this wine is, roll in the 30, 40 euro range. The Damien, I know this is a 40 to 50 euro wine. Uh, Barbaresco these days, at least a kind of 40 euro wine. So these are really high quality wines. Uh, I'll put our affiliate link in the description box and the discount code. You can get 10% off if you want to pick these wines. They kind of ship all over the world, which is kind of cool. Ah, Italian wines. So guys, if you like this video, uh, check out the Wine Club and please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Exotic Wine Travel. We will see you in the next episode. Bye!